You're watching another edition of the Celtics Today Mailbag. I am Will Scott answering your questions here about some Celtics news, Celtics rumors as uh, we carry on onto our weekend, hopefully into our weekend. Hope you're all having a fantastic weekend. Senor Wavy saying this. I'm not sure if Joe is trying to get the starters used to playing together since the playoffs are coming up, but we need to play our reserves too. Grant, Pritchard, and Blake didn't get any playing time in DW. Uh, Derek White looked like a sad puppy out there when Jason Tatum was in. Also, we have so many opportunities to feed Rob Lobs, and we don't. He also said, my fear is that it's going to be hard for the bench to get in a good rhythm when playing with the starters because they never got the chance or enough time to. Look, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, Senor Wavy, I trust Joe Mazzulla, uh, these lineups he's putting together. The Celtics have the best record. Uh, well, not anymore, but they have the best offense. I'm so used to saying they have the best record in the Eastern Conference. They have the best offense in the Eastern Conference, uh, so I trust what Joe Mazzulla is doing. But I agree uh, that Peyton Pritchard uh, deserves some more playing time. I agree uh, that Blake Griffin deserves some more playing time because let's say an injury does happen down the road, in the playoffs especially, uh, and you need those guys to step up and they just don't have the minutes, uh, then, yeah, I'd be a little bit worried about that. And uh, Rob Williams, you know, I'm, I'm not disagreeing. We, we should uh, we should definitely give him some more lobs. Christo saying, why are the Celtics good against good teams and bad against bad teams? <laughs> I, I couldn't have said any better. I mean, you're 1-3 against the Orlando Magic. I mean, if you're facing the Orlando Magic in a seven-game series, I'd be a little bit concerned. Uh, but the good news about that, Christos, is that uh, you're not facing uh, the Magic in the playoffs. You're going to be facing good teams in the playoffs, and the Celtics have matched up well against those teams. Uh, we saw them uh, beat the Cleveland Cavaliers uh, the other night. That was a big win. We saw them beat the 76ers last week. They did lose to the Knicks a few days ago. Uh, but the Knicks are also uh, the hottest team in the NBA, arguably, right now. Probably second hottest behind... Uh, the Milwaukee Bucks. So, and you're without Jalen Brown in that game as well. So, I would feel pretty good uh, about the Celtics. Uh, you know, kind of how they match up against some of these playoff teams they're probably going to face. Roderick Clark saying, "Can somebody please tell me why the Boston Celtics organization opted not to pick up anyone in the buyout market?" This is so frustrating because everyone knows we desperately need a backup wing. What the F is going on? The owners said they are going for the ship this year, so whatever Brad needs to do, go out there and get somebody, no restrictions. Yeah, I, I'm i a little bit confused too, Roderick. I feel like the Celtics should have gotten, you know, uh, you know, Will Barden or Danny Green in the buyout market. But also, it's worth noting that the Celtics aggressively pursued Danny Green, but Green did not think he was going to get a whole lot of playing time on the Celtics team. So he goes to Cleveland, where he's probably going to have a bigger role. He already has two rings. I don't think uh, – does he have two or three rings, Seeps? At least – I think he has – I think he might have three rings. But anyway, Danny Green uh, is an NBA champ, so it's like, you know, it's – I feel like he cares more about uh, – he has three rings. Thank you, Producer Patrick Seaman. I feel like for Danny, he feels more about he, – he cares more about playing time at this point than winning a ring because he already has three rings. So – uh, in the Celtics' defense, they went after him. They were linked to Kevin Love. They didn't get Kevin Love. But I'm with you, Roger. they got to use that final roster spot on somebody. Now, will the Celtics use their last roster spot? Type Y for yes or type N for no down in the comment section. Uh, before the trade deadline, also right after the deadline, we heard Brad Stevens say uh, they plan to use the final roster spot. But uh, a couple weeks after the deadline, they have yet to do that. Vibe Music saying, what was it like transitioning from being a basketball player into being a Boston Celtics reporter, podcaster? Yeah, good question. You know, a lot of you don't know that I was um, an All-American at Syracuse University. Actually, no, I was not. <laughs> uh, vibe Music, you might be getting me confused with another uh, Celtics podcast reporter. I, I played basketball in middle school, and uh, I stopped growing, which was a problem. I was 5'9 in eighth grade. I have not grown since, so, so that's very sad. Um I was a pretty good sharpshooter. I mean, I was a six-man kind of off the bench. You know, they would put me into the game. I'd make a few threes. I actually made uh, three three-pointers against Jared Vanderbilt's team uh, when I played against Jared Vanderbilt in eighth grade. And as you could probably imagine, uh, Vanderbilt kicked our ass. 
Uh, he scored like 29 points or something in that game. But I scored nine points against Jared Vanderbilt. So uh, that's kind of my claim to fame here around the chat sports office. But in high school, I played tennis. In college, I was a collegiate curler if you can believe that, uh, which, which is true. That is, that is, that is Pat, Bruce Patrick Seaman can confirm that. He's seen the, the trophy in my apartment. Um, but uh, I did not play basketball in college or, uh, or in high school. I want to tell you about this great deal we have for you, some Celti Celtics St. Patrick's Day gear. If you're a Celtics fan, this is our holiday. you got to go pick up some St. Patty's gear. Chatsports.com slash Celtics screen. Got that Jalen Brown jersey. Got this flat bill and got the socks. I like these socks a lot. Chatsports.com slash Celtics screen. Go and pick them up. You can rep the C's on St. Patrick's Day. No other team in the league can claim St. Patrick's Day like the Celtics do. So go and take advantage of this deal. Chatsports.com slash Celtics screen. Brought in action saying, could you see us signing Chris Middleton this summer? That's a great question. Um, I don't know. It depends on the price. Take a look at the numbers this year. Uh, he made over $37 million this year. He's not going to get paid like that again, I don't think. 13.6 points per game, 4.2 rebounds per game, 4.2 assists per game. He's just played in 19 games this season, so it's somewhat of a limited uh, sample size. I like Middleton. Um, again, it would depend on the price uh, because Middleton – it's probably going to command a lot of money, not nearly as much as he's making right now. Again, he's making $37 million this season. Uh, but still, it is a, uh, it's a—it's an interesting idea, maybe bringing Chris Middleton in. Um, but I feel like the Celtics, if they do pursue someone this summer, it might be a center. Maybe Jakob Pertl. You go after him again. We'll see. Jace Foles saying, I'm worried about the box. Yeah, I am too. I still think the Celtics beat them in a seven-game series. Uh, but I think home court advantage is going to be crucial. And right now, the Celtics are the two seed uh, because the Bucs have won 16 in a row. The Celtics have been playing great lately, but they haven't won 16 games in a row like uh, Milwaukee has. So Milwaukee is uh, currently, as we're filming this on Friday, currently have the top spot in the East. So the Celtics uh, you know, have to put pedal to metal here last couple weeks of the season uh, make sure they get the one seed because I do not want to have Milwaukee having home court advantage in the playoffs. Isaac the Gamer, what's up? Why is Peyton Pritchard not a starter? I don't think he should be a starter, Isaac, but he sh he definitely deserves more playing time. I've said that over and over and over again on the show. When he was in NBA trade rumors, uh, at the deadline, I was like, do not trade Peyton Pritchard. Get him more involved. I'm still going uh, to say that. I think Peyton Pritchard deserves to get more involved. Now, the Celtics are a little bit guard heavy. You have Marcus Smart. You have Malcolm Brogdon, so Peyton Pritchard's kind of the third point guard, maybe even the fourth point guard right now on the Celtics team because you also have Derek White who can play the one and the two. So um, I really like Pritch. I think he should get more involved. Whenever he's had to step up this year, he's certainly done it. Robert Vera, or Rob Vera, what's up? Saying Stanley Johnson is better and as we need a wing stopper, uh, better than Will Barton is what Rob was saying here. Will Barton's already been picked up, so there you go. Hauser can certainly handle the need. So Stanley Johnson, interesting interesting target here. Uh, 6.2 points per game, 3.1 rebounds per game for San Antonio. San Antonio let him go. Shooting 45% from three, kind of a limited sample size there, but over 53% from field goal range. Uh, Stanley, I like him. Um, I would not mind the Celtics spending their last roster spot on Stanley Johnson. I think there's some intriguing options out there, and he certainly is that name, a, a name. Uh, but at this point, I would just be happy if the Celtics got anybody. Uh, Carmelo Anthony, obviously, a name to watch. If you haven't checked out our previous show, we talked about maybe signing Carmelo Anthony. So go and check that out. And be sure to subscribe to the channel as well, youtube.com slash Celtics TV. Always going to have you guys covered with Celtics news and Celtics rumors. And if you want to get on a future mailbag, we post to our community page, a mailbag call every week.